Avenging Angel is a 1985 crime thriller sequel directed by Robert Vincent O'Neill and starring Betsy Russell, Robert F. Lyons, Stephen Porter, Barry Pearl, Paul Lambert, Frank Doubleday, Tim Russovich, Ozzie Davis, Susan Terrell, and Rory Calhoun. The film opens at college track meet Lieutenant Andrews and Terry cheer Molly on. Wait, that's not Donna Wilkes. That's Betsy Russell from Tomboy, among other things. Molly is down college and Lieutenant Andrews has made sure she gets an education to become a lawyer and never return to the streets. Now listen, this, this thing with Terry now, is this serious? I like him. Yeah? Come on. Uh, what? I like him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Andrews wasn't near this friendly in the first film, but he's not the same actor either. It's the Boulevard, and it's 1985, so here's some 1985 music. <laughs> Andrews is on patrol, and if there are guys in this limo, then they're probably bad. Gratuitous nudity! Jesus! And it turns out the woman we've been leering at is a cop! You know shit's going to get real when 1980's token heavy Tim Russovich shows up in your movie. She's wearing a wire! I don't know why you would hide a mic there because you know that's the first place her eyes are gonna go. Back on patrol, Andrews gets a call that the female officer's cover has been blown and rushes to her place to make sure she's cool. They swarm the apartment like they're Jehovah's Witnesses and... Holy shit! They wipe everyone in the apartment building out, including the cop, and start searching the place for something, I guess. Andrews arrives just as they leave and saves this asshole getting shot in the process. Then here's another shot for good measure. Ah, he's fucking dead. Revenge plot now activated. At school, Molly is in the middle of a mock trial and we get a sense of mid 80s sensitivity. That's right, here's a note saying your father figure was murdered. Deal with it and finish class. There's a meeting of the bad guys where they agree that the asshole that Andrews saved needs to die as Angel goes to the cemetery and visits Andrews' grave, vowing to take her vengeance. Molly heads back to the boulevard and it looks like everything is closing up, probably due to Walmart or Amazon. It's Yo-Yo! I can't believe it, it is you. You, you, you look terrific. You, you're so different. You've changed. She sure did. They go see Susan Tyrell and she has a fucking baby? Where'd you find him, Sally? Oh, this little hooker I knew. She owed me seven months back rent. So she splits and leaves me this kid. Damn. They found her body. Behind the alley a week ago. Wow. They need some assistance in finding Johnny Glitter and need the expertise of Kit Carson. But he's been locked up in a sanitarium. Come on, we all saw that shit coming. Well, they sure pulled this shit together fast. They search the sanitarium as this guy fiddles with the hearse's paint job. Busted. Molly finds Kit in the library and hey, it's Seinfeld's mom. They wheel out and the chase is on. They use that same bit twice. They hop in a hearse and bye. The next day Molly switches to Angel and they go to the book depository? No, it's Kit's new warehouse that he was ripped from. I sure don't want to go back there again. You won't have to, Kit. I'm filing a restraining order to keep them from taking you back. How much is that going to cost him? Old senile man with a gun 
Part 2. They hit the streets and everybody's looking for Johnny Glitter. Look, honey, I'm not the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. And I don't give nothing away for free. Ah! What? What? Chinatown! Nice guys. <laughs> what the fuck? At the hotel, Johnny is having story time, but here comes the bad guy swarm. They follow a trail of glitter and find Johnny, but Kit and Angel arrive with a shootout going down, and they get the fuck out of Dodge. I knew his heart pumped more than just shit. They set up a neighborhood meeting, then it's real estate investigation time to some hot 80 sacks. No human being would stack books like this. Here's a father and son bad guy meeting. Two of our fucking men wasted and you don't know who did it? Well, they came out of nowhere. They disappeared without a trace. The smiles look familiar. At the neighborhood meeting, a deal is made that will find Andrew's killer and whoever is trying to take over the neighborhood. We think we've identified one of Andrew's killers. Wooly Woody? Is that a good idea? One more word, and I'll blow your balls into outer space. Right. Bang, bang. Studs is the biology teacher with the snake in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. It's a raid and Angel gets busted, but she didn't really commit any crimes? In jail, she meets Roxy, who was Tina in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. Who was Tina, you may ask? Now you remember. Angel has a moment with an underage hooker, then lawyers the shit out of the sergeant. Your department is in violation of due process. Article 1, Section 7 of the California Constitution. Not to mention the Civil Rights Act. Ozzie Davis! They have a come to Jesus moment and Angel requests that they do something to help the 13-year-old hooker in the lockup stay off the streets. Please don't release her to a senile old cowboy and a drag queen. Well, looks like the cops didn't give a shit. Ray the bad guy got spotted at the Hollywood Tower Hotel and the gang goes to investigate. Johnny, you stay here. Kit and I'll check it out. All right. If you see Andrew's killer, if you even think you see Andrew's killer, you honk that horn, okay? Okay, yeah. In L.A.? I can't. Jeez, Ray, take it easy. She's only a kid. Only a kid? Only a kid? I think this is the place. They save the girl and flee, splitting up with Angel dumping this poor housekeeper's water all over the floor. <laughs> Since the cops didn't give two shits, Angel gets the girl set up with her sister in Phoenix, and she leaves. These guys are planning on killing everyone. Molly! Molly Stewart. Captain Meridian would like to see you. This is obviously the guy they have on the inside. Get up. Yep. She breaks away and there are a bunch of misfires. That's what happens when you get cocky, asshole. Who? What? Oh, it's Ozzie Davis for the save. They make a deal to work together in taking down the criminal element as Miles discovers the third guy on the inside is dead. This time I'll take care of it. Personally. Yeah. <laughs> 
Why didn't you just shoot her as she walked out? There's a car chase with shooting and Kit is getting strapped. Oh shit! Whoops! Then they get a blowout and have to continue on foot. Why is everything in this movie a piece of shit? And Miles is busted. They've got Miles. Arthur shows up at the apartment building and there's one hell of a fight. And they kidnapped a kid. They discuss what to do with Miles and hey, nice rope. Watch it! Look out, he's got a gun! He's off the gun, cowboy. Who do you think you're fucking with? Holy shit! And that phone calls an offer to exchange the baby for Miles. Whoops! They agree and head to the exchange. Uh, he looks really fucking dead. You all right, Miles? Are you fucking serious? You might as well have tried to throw your voice, too. Fucking cheap band-aids. Then the shooting starts with a bunch of dead henchmen and Arthur being the only one left. <laughs> That's not cool, dude. You never make it. Someone get the baby! Holy shit! <laughs> Thank Christ! And they fucking leave. Avenging Angel tries to recreate the first film, but it turns out to be a hokey parody of its predecessor. Most of the returning cast just seems to be going through the motions to get a paycheck. Along with that, Betsy Russell is a pretty good replacement for Donna Wilkes. It still has the feel of the first film, but with the bad guys that are pretty well cookie cutter, instead of the ending faltering, the whole damn film just feels like it's just ready to fall apart at any moment. Obviously the original Angel film made money, so they rushed the sequel out as quickly as possible. And what we got was a dud of a sequel. You touch that phone and I'll break your dick!